Karen is on the back side of the family tree. She's kind of the forgotten daughter. Karen is the youngest sister. Karen is uh, funny, fun, always hopeful. Adorable. She's my redhead. She's my squeeze. She's my girl. She's my fiance. I'm going to marry her. I'm not goofing around. I love her dearly. She is fun. She's smart. Pretty much the way I look at the character, she likes to have sex, and I like that a lot. Karen is the invisible daughter, and she is so full of love and so desperately wants the American dream of a loving husband and a family and a house and a, a successful career that, to me, she's the most heartbreaking of the three Weston sisters, that she's willing to do anything to get that. Karen is all heart. Karen has her feet firmly planted in high heels that are firmly planted in a, in a delusion, a fantasy. And, um, but she, I think, knows that that's the safest place for her. Karen was maybe born in the wrong family. She would have thrived anywhere. She's very lively and very uh, loving and very um, uh, embraces life and embra embraces opportunity and chances and adventure. Um, and those are all qualities which um, don't, <laughs> don't uh, incite um, affection in her family. <laughs> They, they don't get her and she doesn't get them, so there's a, a little bit of a disconnect there. Karen is sort of going to be okay no matter what. She's, she's got some where she got it, who knows, some kind of wild optimism. Karen's very naive. She has just always been looking for somebody to marry and she kind of just has been running around all over the place. She has come back to the family home and she's brought her fiance and this is the chance of her life to finally show her family that she's really kind of become someone, that she's become someone because she's actually in love with someone and someone actually loves her back. So she's here to show off uh, that she's finally an adult. Possibly as a, as a result of some of the, the pain and uh, damage in the family, she has been struggling to, to, uh, to find a way to get people in her life that um, are a little more stable. So she shows up at the beginning of the play with her new fiancé and in the course of the play you find out whether she's made a good choice or not. No matter what happens, she always can find a way out of it, a way to get on top of it, a way to turn it into something that she won't be defeated. She really tries to find the silver lining in everything. She really wants to be happy. And I guess that can be a little annoying to some people because it might be considered a little desperate maybe, but she really has uh, hope. I think she's really the only one in the family that has a lot of hope.